So welcome back to What Gear Reviews today. I'm testing out these, the Bowers & Wilkins PX versus the Sony 1000X Mark III. Now both of these are noise cancelling headphones. Which one's better? We're about to find out. All right, so let's first look at the design on the Bowers & Wilkins PX. A couple of things I really, really like about these, the texture of that ballistic nylon around the ear cups is just awesome. I really, really like that. Doesn't open the door to any fingerprints or smudges or anything like that. It feels really durable as well. It's gonna take a lot of wear and tear without actually showing any visible damage. With plastic or metal, you're gonna see scuffs. With this ballistic nylon, really awesome, love that. Now with the Sony 1000 xm 3s you've got this matted finish, which you didn't used to have. You used to have this kind of textured surface, kind of faux leather style type texture on it. Now it does kind of open the door to fingerprints and stuff like that, but it's a lot more low key. And I really like that about these headphones, the fact that you're not really trying to show off too much with these like you would with a Beats headphone or anything like that. Nice finish, very, very low profile, very stealthy, as I mentioned in my other video about these headphones. Like that too. So across the top of the Bowers and Wilkins, you've got that same ballistic nylon, which I really like, and a good amount of padding across the headband there. And on the Sony, they have improved the padding as well, right across the top of the headband, even the top part that doesn't touch your head has padding on it as well. So padding all the way around, super comfortable as well. So on the backs of the ear cups, Bowers and Wilkins have put their brand right across there. And to be honest, I'm not a massive fan of massive branding, but this does look pretty classy. They've used a the metal there. The cup is metal as well. You've got the ballistic nylon around the back and you can see the way the hinges fit to these ear cups, making them really, really strong. And if we take a closer look at the hinges there, you can see how the braided cable runs through this circular piece, which is reinforcing that hinge. And then it fits to the ear cup there. This is definitely an area where Bowers and Wilkins have done a really good job with the build quality. So on the back of the Sony's, you can see minimal branding here. They have now kind of highlighted it with this bronzy kind of gold color and across the mic as well. The hinges, however, have been improved, I'm told, from the previous ones. They did have a problem with them snapping in the past. You've kind of got this arm here, which allows the headphones to collapse down like this. And uh, you can see there, it's all one piece now. It kind of was in two pieces before. I think when it comes to build strength, maybe Bowers and Wilkins takes the edge there. Now let's look at the onboard controls and ports. So on the Bowers and Wilkins here, you can see you've got quite a few buttons. You've got this kind of switch there, which actually turns the headphone on and off. So you have to hold it down to switch it on. You've got a button to switch the ambient noise reduction here with this. You've got volume up and down, and then you've got this center button here, which is play, pause, and if you hold it down, you get your Google Assistant or Siri. Quite a few buttons to figure out, but once you've been using these for a while, it's pretty easy to find. Now let's look at the controls on the Sony, and you can see here, really, really minimal buttons. You've got one button for the power, and one button for switching between noise cancelling modes. And actually, I found out if you hold the button down for a long time, it actually does the calibration for your for your head basically so it knows what shape your head is what shape your ears are and if you're wearing glasses or got a haircut at least that's what they say i don't know how much of a difference that makes but i do like the simplified buttons and another thing to bear in mind is the touch controls over the ear cup itself the swiping on the ear cup will actually allow you to skip forward back change volume up and down and open your google assistant so minimal buttons you also got the nfc there as well so when it comes to the ear cups on these headphones the PX have a massive ear cup. My entire ear is fitting inside of this and it actually feels like there's a bit of room in there for my ears to breathe. It's a slightly harder fit around the ear, but there's more space for your ear to breathe. So that's a good thing. So on the 1000X, they've made the ear cups bigger now than the previous version. And to be honest, my ear pretty much fits entirely inside them. I guess it's gonna depend on how big your ears are, but what I do feel here is a slightly more cozy feel inside the headphones. Definitely softer ear cups, but I feel like my ears are going to heat up a lot quicker. But let me show you the ear cups side by side so you can see what I'm talking about.
Right, so when it comes to usability on these headphones, it's super, super easy. All you do is hit that switch to turn the headphones on, hold it down for a couple of seconds, turns the Bluetooth on, then you search for it through the app. You've got a dedicated Bowers and Wilkins app. To be honest, the app isn't that advanced, but it does exactly what you need it to do. And let me show you that now real quick. So this is the Bowers and Wilkins PX app. You've got the environment filter where you can switch between the different ambient noise filters and flight being the highest and office being the lowest. And this will automatically adjust the voice pass through as well. And that's pretty much it on the home screen. It tells you the battery life there. There's a slightly more advanced menu here as well. So inside there, you can check the firmware. When I took these out of the box, I had to do a firmware update immediately. And then you've got the wear sensor. So I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. Basically, when you're listening to music, you can lift the ear cup and it will instantly turn off the headphones. And then when you put it back on, it will start playing again. So you probably only need to adjust this if you have a massive head and when you put the headphones on, it thinks the headphones are still off. So uh, hopefully that's not you. If it is, you might need to adjust that. And then you've got a bit more information about the device there and you can register it online as well. So these are so easy to use. If you lift the ear cup, it will stop playing so you can listen to what people are saying to you. And when you take them off and put them back on, it will start playing again. So you can hear they're playing right now, stop playing. If I put them back on, they start playing again. That's really, really cool. If you just want a really easy to use pair of headphones, it might be Bowers and Wilkins for the win. So when it comes to usability on the Sonys, one of the best things about this that the PX doesn't have is the NFC. So if you have an NFC enabled phone, you can touch it on the ear cup and it will pair automatically. You can do it the manual way like on the PX where you literally open your Bluetooth, connect to the Bluetooth and then open the app. So one area where Sony's pretty much gone above and beyond anyone else is the app and this is really good for those of you out there who are real tech savvy and i'll show you it now really quickly i won't go into every single element of it so here is the sony headphone app and it has so much on it right now it's detecting the ambient noise around me which is quite quiet you've got an option there to personalize the sound experience you've got the atmospheric pressure sensor which will adjust the sound based on whether you're flying or at high altitudes you can adjust the position of where the sound is coming from. You've got an EQ there and you can adjust the sort of surround sound settings. It will show you what was playing last on the, on the headphones as well. And then you can adjust the priority of the quality. So depending on your signal strength and stuff like that. Then you've got Sony's own DSEE HX, which is the sort of enhancement engine that they have. You can change what the button on the headphone does, the ambient noise button, if you want. And to be honest, probably won't want to do that. One area where the PX works a little bit more efficiently than the Sony's is the fact that when you take them off, it actually turns the headphone off. Whereas the Sony's actually have a delay time, which you can specify. And there's more stuff you can do on the app, but I'm not going to go into every single thing. But I think Sony win when it comes to the software on the app for sure. But then again, if you want to keep things real simple, then maybe the PX is a bit easier to use. So one area where Sony have really nailed the usability is the voice cues inside the headphone. It'll actually tell you what it's doing when it's switching a mode, it'll tell you what mode it's in, it'll tell you when it's connecting, when it's disconnecting, all this kind of stuff. At the moment, the PX just give beep noises, which kind of indicate something's happening. The Sony is much more specific in that area. But bear in mind, the PX is, is Bowers and Wilkins' first attempt at a wireless headphone and they'll probably add this kind of stuff in the later models. But at the moment, when it comes to that kind of thing, Sony got the advantage. So when it comes to noise cancelling abilities on both of these headphones, both of them do a great job. The Sonys do have that barometer so it can tell if you're high up in the air or at altitude and it will adjust the pressure. So that's a little bit of an advantage there. But if you use these side by side on a plane, it's gonna be hard to tell them apart. I have tested these on a train and I must say it's really, really close. Both of them amazing noise cancelling abilities. So onto the sound quality. The main reason you guys probably came here is because you want to know which one of these sounds better. And I guess the answer to that question is not straightforward because both of them have different qualities in different areas. I would say the Bowers and Wilkins have a much more classic sound signature. It's really well balanced across all of the frequencies. They haven't gone out of their way to enhance the bass, which is what a lot of people like these days. But if you're more into sort of rock music, classical music, music that's been recorded live, stuff like this, then I think you're gonna get a much more accurate sound 
from the Bowers and Wilkins. And also that extra space inside of the ear cup might give you a bit of a better sound stage in comparison to the Sony's. So the sound quality on the 1000X M3's is really, really impressive. And again, going back to what I said before, it depends on what kind of stuff you're listening to. And one of the things that's really changed a lot since the older versions of these headphones is the amount of bass that these can output. It's just crazy amount of bass in there. There is an equalizer where you can adjust it. That might affect your audio quality a little bit if you're playing around with the equalizer. But generally speaking, across the board, really, really good. The highs and the mids are also good. I think the distance from the driver to your ear is a bit shorter though than the PX headphones. So you're gonna get a bit more loudness out of them as well. So when it comes to sound quality, the source that you're listening to is super important. So what I did, I actually got some flak audio and played it back on both of these. With the Bowers and Wilkins, it will automatically switch to Aptex HD, which will give you very close to high res audio, full output. And it's really, really crisp. The sound is so clean. You can hear all of the instruments there. You can hear the strumming of strings and stuff like this. The detail is really, really impressive. If you're playing regular MP3, Sony might have a little bit of an advantage. So the advantage that Sony have here is their DSEE HX, which is the upscaling software, which tries to enhance the audio a bit more. It does work pretty well. It's not a massive difference, but one area where Sony again shines a little bit, depending on the source, is with the LDAC software that will allow us to stream higher res audio over Bluetooth, which gives them a slight edge depending on the source you're listening to. So you know what, if you ask me which one of these sounds better, I would have to answer, it depends what you're listening to. If you're listening to more modern types of music, more sort of synthesized stuff, then I'd say the Sony's. If you're listening to more sort of instrumental music, actual live bands and stuff like that, real bands, then maybe the PX. That's not to say that the Sony's not good in that area too. They're both really good, but I feel like they're kind of fine tuned for different kinds of audiences. So let's talk about some of the awesome features that these headphones have. The Sony's have 30 hour battery USB-C charging. The PX's also have 30 hour battery and USB-C charging. The build quality on the PX is just really, really awesome. Feels slightly stronger than the Sony's, but I really like the style of the Sony's as well. On the PX's, that ballistic nylon texture just makes it really unique and maybe a bit more resistant to scratches, which I like as well. Inside the Sony, you've got a barometer which can detect the atmospheric pressure. Now, that's crazy. I never heard of that in a headphone before. Awesome feature there. That sensor inside the PX is where you just lift the cup up and it stops the music. And if you put them around your neck, it stops the music and turns them off. Really is gonna save you a lot of battery. Really efficient. Awesome feature. The Bowers and Wilkins PX will let you connect to more than one Bluetooth device, whereas the Sony will only allow you to connect to one. The Sony has NFC, which is super, super easy to use. You just pick up your device, touch it to the back of the headphone, and it connects. And that makes things a little bit easier. Bowers and Wilkins app is really quite simple, really, really easy to use. There's not too much you can mess around with and mess up the headphone. And ease of use when it comes to the app is definitely on Bowers and Wilkins side. But saying that, if you're a real techie and you like adjusting all of the features, changing the EQ, doing all this kind of stuff, you're not scared of technology, then the Sony app, mind blowing. So that's it for this What Gear review on these two headphones. I like both of these, the style of these, real classy look there with the Bowers and Wilkins, with the Sony's, a much more younger sort of modern look and more modern features, sound quality, on both is just awesome. It's really hard to pick a winner here. I'd love to know what you guys think. Which one of these wins this versus video? Leave that in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I filmed it all on my XZ2. Oh, and if you're just finding me for the first time, make sure you hit the thumbs up. Hulk smash that subscribe button. And a thumbs up would be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys in the next one. Don't be late.